Now it is my honor to introduce our last speaker, Salim. He is a Syrian-Palestinian blogger and human rights activist born in Yarmouk camp for political refugees in Damascus in 1989. He comes from Sweden, where he has been living as a political refugee since 2013, and where he talks, writes, and advocates uh, for those who have been left uh, unspoken. Welcome. One last speech. Wow, that was a big okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, we start in Arabic, a few lines. Uh, القصص ببعض القصص خاصة في هذه الأوقات العصيبة التي تمر على بلدي فلسطين البلد الذي ينحدر منه والدي وجدي وسوريا البلد الذي أنحدر منه والذي عشت منه طول حياتي Ladies and gentlemen On my flight here to Paris coming from my exile in Sweden where I've been living as a political refugee since 2013 I was thinking which story I need to tell you? Shall I tell you my own story as a stateless Palestinian from Syria and refugee again in Sweden? I now feel lucky and privileged, indeed, to stand before you today because crossing borders, mobility, and checkpoints have been always constant and daily fear and challenge in Syria. Now, as I have my Swedish travel document, I can be with you today to deliver some of the untold stories about Syria, the Syria that the news does not cover. But the question remains there. What sort of a story I need to tell? Shall I tell the story of half of the country population being displaced and taking refuge in the country and crossing the Mediterranean? Or the story of a children out of school and girls being abused and people struggling on day-to-day -day basis in order to survive? Unfortunately, stories of terror, of barrel bombs and massacres have acquired an awful familiarity. But young people of my age, young men and women of Syria, have turned these hardships into drivers for change. Like the story of the movement of over 80 Syrian civil society organizations across Syria, uniting under a campaign called the Planet Syria. In Planet Syria, these organizations from all over the country are calling for one, an immediate ceasefire, and two, serious peace talks that include young and emerging leaders from inside and outside Syria, and most importantly, women. So let's not forget the unique story of the Syrian woman on the front line. According to Peace Building Defines Our Future Now, a report that was published a couple of days ago, 45 women organization, 35 activists, 100,000 women-focused groups all over Syria. All have a unified voice for you to hear today. Peace is a process that starts when women are present at the negotiation table. But maybe I also shall tell you the story of the 15th garden, Shara al Khamstash, the street of the 15th, a famous street at Yarmouk camp in the center of Yarmouk. 
15th Garden is also the name of a farmer solidarity network supporting besieged areas in Syria to grow their own food in houses, on rooftops, and in between buildings where mortars do not fall, including Yermuk camp for Palestinian refugees south of Damascus, where I was born and raised, and where more than 200 people were starved to death. One of my childhood friends, Abdullah al khatib he might be listening to me now while I'm talking, remains under siege in Yermuk since three years. He used to work for UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Work Agency for Palestinian Refugees in the Near East. But now, Abdullah is a farmer and an educator. He's helping people to secure their food and water, making sure that education is provided to every single kid in the besieged camp and southern Damascus. The stories of Abdullah, ladies and gentlemen, and other heroes are endless, but they are untold, and even this short speech of mine, unfortunately, won't do them justice. Those are the Syrians who keep life going, who protect their communities, and who are always there to act when international aid cannot make it. A few weeks ago, Tunisia civil society won Nobel Peace Prize. A recognition for civil society globally and in our region in the Middle East and North Africa, but also a highlight for the role of civil society in peace building today. A crucial role the Syrian civil society, Syrian civil activists, men and women, as we speak, are also playing in promoting peace and coexistence, saving lives and creating alternatives and in alternative systems under conflict. Honorable guest, ça me fait plaisir d'être présent avec vous aujourd'hui, surtout dans ces temps qui sont très difficiles pour la Syrie, pour parler des activistes qui sont toujours en train de travailler en Syrie, qui sont toujours en train de faire quelque chose pour leur communauté. Honorable guests, it is a rare moment for me to stand here today to fulfill what I consider the obligation of a survival of war, to tell stories. UNESCO community, I sincerely invite you to stand by the vibrant Syrian civil society, to support the young men and women who are thriving despite war. These, ladies and gentlemen, should be your stakeholders. Those who cannot be among us today, those who are limited by borders and checkpoints, those who are behind high walls, are the sustainable partners for a better Middle East and a better tomorrow. Think of them. Thank you so much.